Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to another album ranking. Um, finally, um, it's been quite a while, and the reason, one of the reasons why it's been quite a long time since the last one I've done, um, which was Celtic Frost, wasn't it, with uh, Graham, uh, was is because the uh, the album ranking is Motorhead. And that's a lot of albums, um, and I always like to listen through to all the albums before doing the rankings, and some of the, the, the ones that I'm sort of less familiar with, a lot of the newer ones I listen to a lot more. So that's 23 pseudo albums, um, uh, the most so far, actually, from any band I've done. And... Um, uh, I'm, I'm doing the 23, um, I'm included on parole, um... Some people, uh, some album rankings, Motorhead ones don't, some do, because it's, it, they recorded the album but it never got released, uh, but it's kind of, um, it's kind of a special, it was the first Motorhead album I ever heard, so, uh, it's kind of special to me, so I'm including that, oh, that's bright, um, so, yeah, uh, Motorhead, one, one, obviously one of my favourite bands of all time. And actually, if, um, if I had to include all the albums, No Sleep to Hammersmith would probably be my favourite album by Motorhead if I had to pick one. Um, definitely uh, one of my favourite live albums of all time. Absolutely love it. So, um, so yeah, this is a, a really interesting ranking. Quite difficult to rank the, the bottom half, actually. Um, my, my top three have always been... Um, my top three that never change, they're sort of cast in stone in a way, but yeah, it's been interesting doing this. Um, I, I've, I've enjoyed watching them on YouTube. There's not that many Motorhead ranking videos on YouTube, I was quite surprised about that, but but anyway, let's crack on. So, I'm gonna start at uh, number 23. I have, um, by the way, all the albums up to um, We Are Motorhead, and I have a couple more as well. Um, I kind of like like a lot of things with me. Like uh, once I got into the noughties and two thousand tens, I, I didn't really buy so much music really uh, on CD or album or whatever. Um, uh, it's a shame actually because my flatmate and plus my flatmate bought all the albums. Uh, uh, if I was still with my old flatmate, I'd have all the albums. But uh, he he bought all the the sort of latest Motorhead releases, so I just listened to his albums really. <laughs> But yeah, cool, let's crack on. Um, uh, number 23. Um, this rank uh, fairly reasonably high, actually, um, on the internet. But I, I've, I've, I've never enjoyed it that much. Um, uh, what I would say about Motorhead, actually, is Motorhead have not made one bad album. They're, they're, there's not an album where I go, oh, that's bad at all. They're, they're, all, they're all good in their own right. Um, this is... Uh, um, what year did this come out? I think it was 2002, maybe. But yeah, this is the album uh, Hammered. And uh, yeah, like I say, um, I never really liked the sound of it. Um, it. It's got a slightly sort of down-tuned kind of guitar sound. I don't think Lemmy sounds that great. Um, I don't know, it, it kind of sounds a, a sort of slightly uninspired album, and I know uh, Mickey D said it was like their moody album, but um, people seem to like it quite a lot. Um, but there are some um, pretty good songs, I like uh, Brave New World, uh, Voices from the War, um, pretty good songs, Red Raw, the fast one, Serial Killer one, and, and the track Serial Killer was uh, something quite new, uh, well totally new for Motorhead, it's actually a spoken word track. So I thought that was pretty cool. At that time, actually, um, they did the song called "The Game" uh, for the uh, for the wrestling, which was quite a big song for them. It never ended up on the album, but it was around that time. But um, yeah, it, it it's okay, but um, it feels a little uninspired, and um, yeah, not 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 hugely into it, but still pretty cool. Right, uh, number twenty two. I do have this album, um, and. It's a really cool cover, actually. A lot of the modern albums, I don't think have very good covers, really. But this one, this one does. Uh, it's uh, Aftershock. Uh, I've got this cool kind of almost like book style sort of release. Um, pretty cool. It, it's uh, um, it's a bit 
Well, no, no Motorhead albums are long, but um, it has probably too many songs, really. Um, it's a very bluesy sounding album, actually. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of slightly forgettable. Um, don't remember a lot of the songs, but um, I'm trying to have a... Coup de Gras was not too bad. Lost Woman Blues, the blues number is pretty cool, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, Paralyzed the last track's not, actually not too bad, but yeah, not not um not too many songs that uh, really did a lot for me, but still a great sounding album. Uh, what what happened actually from um, the Inferno album is they used Motorhead used the same um, a producer a guy called Cameron Webb, and he really brought uh, a kind of quite a a uh, big production sound, like really heavy, everything was kind of up front uh, and big. The only downside with that is, um, I would say a lot of the Motorhead albums kind of sound similar because of that, um, in sort of the modern day, but uh, but still all good. It's better to sound um, average good than bad, I guess. But no, no, pretty cool album, great cover. Um, yeah, number 20, number 21. And um, uh, what I would say is uh, uh, a big apology to Jeff Rowland. Um, hi to you, uh, uh, Motorhead's his favourite band and he's a massive fan. He put his list up for me actually, which was really cool. And he really loves this album, but uh, uh, to be honest, it never really did a lot for me. Um, I don't mind it, uh, there's some moments, but he really loves it. Uh, I'm talking about the album The World Is Yours. And... Um, the thing about this album, though, which was um, a little different uh, to a lot of the modern albums, is uh, it got a really big promotion. I, I remember um, it being pushed quite a lot. I think they were on a new record label at this time as well. Um, I think they'd come off of their uh, the, their last one. And uh, I remember it was on Classic Rock magazine. You could buy it on that. And it was, it was being pushed quite a lot. But there, there's some cool songs in it um uh, get back in line was the big sort of hit wasn't it you know uh, they did the video for it um pretty good pretty good song um i like uh, actually towards the end you got a uh, brotherhood of man that's a pretty like slow sort of uh, aggressive kind of doomy number with uh, Lemmy doing that kind of uh, growly vocal but my favorite song a song i absolutely love actually is outlaw Outlaw's a great song. I, I, I love that. Uh, the rest is okay. Um, again, sounds great. I can say that about the um, majority of it. All the albums with Cameron Webb, they all sound great. Um, but yeah, yeah, not, not, not too bad. Not too bad. But I, I, I really like Outlaw. What, what, I, what I found with a lot of the modern albums, actually, um, is quite often they start well and then I find they teeter off a bit in the middle and then sort of improve a bit at the end. I find that quite a lot. Um, but yeah, not, not too bad an album. What do we have next? Yeah, no, number 20. Um, again, this one um, on, on the web uh, is liked quite a bit and I don't, I don't dislike it. It was the it was the last album actually. I had uh, Joe uh, Pitanto um, doing the uh, the artwork. Um, he uh, he he did all the uh, artwork for Motorhead from the, pretty much from the beginning uh, right up until Kiss of Death. Uh, I don't know what I don't know. Maybe he retired and maybe they they did actually want someone in someone else in. But um, let's have a look. Uh, Joe Pitagno, I always get his name wrong. But yeah, he come out with the snaggle tooth. Um, yeah, uh, uh, again, it's it, it's okay. It starts off with um, one of my favourite sort of modern motorhead songs, "Sucker." I really like that track. That's awesome. Um, Trigger's really good. Um, a devil I know is not too bad. Um, that's you know the rest is okay. Um, not nothing hugely stands out but pretty good christine's all right it's a quite a fun song sort of glory um yeah 
not not too bad not too bad an album but um i think um the albums from now start to get i start to get a bit more into them but yeah not not too bad an album but not but not terrific i would say so um yeah 19 um it was quite pleasing to see actually that um um motorhead i like to uh, tell you when these albums come out actually i should do because uh uh, two, 2006, Kiss of Death, World is Yours was 2010, Hammer 2002, Motorizer, 2013, that's it. Um, it was nice, uh, uh, 2015's album, uh, which was their last album in the end, uh, Bad Magic. Uh, I thought it was a pretty good uh, finishing album. We didn't did we think it was the last album? I, I, I think we had our suspicions because I think he was quite ill at the time. Um, obviously, uh, rest in peace, uh, Lemmy um, and, and Eddie Clark and Phil Taylor, of course. Um, but it's not a bad album, actually. I, I really like Fit to or Die, the opener. Um, that's a pretty good start. Thunder and Lightning's not, not too bad. Um, the Devil. I love that song, The Devil. That's a great song. As is Shoot Out All Your Lights. Um, well, it's probably my favourite song off that album. Um, <clears throat> a Choke In Your Screams is not too bad as well. So, uh, and I actually quite like their cover of Sympathy For The Devil. I think surprisingly that worked pretty well. Um, and that ended up being the last the last song you would hear by Motorhead, a, a Rolling Stones cover. But... Um, yeah, yeah, pretty good again. Uh, there's a few songs I really like on that, but I thought it was a really good way to end. So, great stuff. Bad magic. Okay, 18, I have this one. Um, this come out 98, I believe. Um, really cool cover, actually. Uh, Snakebite Love. Um... Not not uh, not really a well liked album I think in the Motorhead catalog, but I actually don't mind it um, uh, much at all really. Uh, I think it's a really cool cover. You got a snaggle a snake snaggletooth. I think that's really cool. Um, but it's, it's not too bad. Uh, 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 you got um, yeah love love for sales. Okay, dogs of war is excellent. I really like that song. The title track's not too bad. Assassin I really like. Um, quite signature Mickey D sort of drumming on that one um, second side uh, better off dead the last track is really good um, but yeah the rest uh, is fairly average but um, I think that was a um, there was a whole load of albums produced by Hal Benson probably from maybe bastards up to we are motorhead so they kept that producer for quite a while um, and I think his production style is quite metallic in a way. Uh, the, uh, the thing with um, these late 90s albums is um, they're quite clinical, they're quite um, high end and they're, they're, uh, and not a lot of bass. Um, the, the sort of signature Lemmy bass gets lost a bit on these albums, I, f I find, but they're, they're, they're good, cool albums though. <laughs> Inside cover. So yeah, snake bite love. Um, yeah, this this one is a um, an, an interesting album actually. It's uh, again not hugely liked uh, by people, and uh, it it's quite a commercial uh, motorhead album. I would say I think they were like pushing uh, to be a little bit more commercial with this album. And um, Sam, if it wasn't for some songs I like on it, Sam Wise, Sam Wise, it would be the bottom of the pile for sure because it's definitely kind of lightweight. Um, and that's uh, March or Die from uh, Number Two. You might hear fireworks going off. It's not even firework night. What are you doing? Um, it's Motorhead playing. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think. Because they got a little bit of success, I would say, of 1916. Um, I think they wanted to push the sort of commercial thing a, a little bit further. But um, it's pretty cool. I might have to hit the old glasses because it's very dark. 
But I like the first the, the first track, uh, Stand. That's really cool. Um, I, I like their cover of Cat Scratch Fever. I think that's pretty good. Um, Jack the Ripman, not too bad. Yeah, so they, they did the I Ain't No uh, Nice Guy to try and pretty much get a sort of hit. And the uh, record, label record label never really pushed it. Um, what label were they on at this time? Because it, it was epic, so they were still on epic, so still a major. Um, and it had Slash and Ozzy. And it's not a bad sort of ballad, actually. I don't mind it. Hellraiser, I really like, although, uh, funny enough, I, I think I prefer Ozzy's version. I think it suits him, suits him more. Asylum Choir is a really good song. Um, that's a really cool chorus. And... Um, March or Die, the title track I like, it's got a kind of um, orgasmatron kind of vibe to it, it's, it's quite mean sound, it's the only mean sort of uh, sounding song on the album really, so so it's some pretty good songs in it, it just sounds kind of like watered down Motorhead, um, but you know, not, not, not too bad. Um, yeah, at 16, I want to try and get this album because uh, I do like this album. Um, it's Motorizer, um, come out, uh, 2008. Pretty cool album, actually. I, I, I rather like this. Um, uh, When the Eagle Screams, really good, uh, uh, track. Um, one, one thing you get with, um, modern Motorhead lyrics, I think, maybe less of the sort of rock and roll lifestyle lyrics, maybe a little bit. He likes... And a little bit more political, so certainly three things. I mean, you get it on the track or Gazvatron, but the three things he likes to sing about, or, or, or like write lyrics about, is religion, um, war, and um, oh, what was that? Well, rock and roll, girls, and, and all that kind of stuff, um, and polit politics. Yeah, the three things he hates, you know but he uh, writes a lot of songs about them um yeah rock out i like rock out it's a fun song fast aggressive uh it does have the uh, lyric rock out with your cock out impress your lady friends <laughs> it's a fun song buried alive really good song uh, great riff i love that i really like english rose it starts off with a um a cool uh let me focal at the beginning with just him singing uh, with his voice, I just think that sounds really awesome. Um, Heroes is an excellent song. I really like Heroes, um, and the rest, the rest is okay. So you can see I'm starting to almost like sort of half the album now. But uh, Motorizer, yeah, really good album. Um, was it like much on the internet? It's just uh, it's around about the same as me. Yeah. So uh, this next album, uh, again, not liked that much on, on the internet, but um, it's hard to gauge the internet because, in fact, there wasn't that many um, um, YouTube videos on Motorhead, actually, but um, not, not all 23 albums, anyway. Um, yeah, I like this album. It's cool. It's uh, We Are Motorhead from uh, 2000. Really uh, cool cover. Don't know if you can see that that well. And uh, what I love about this is um, you get to see, I think probably for the first time, uh, Snaggletooth, like the full body of uh, Snaggletooth going to war. So that is a really cool, cool cover. And um, apart from the sort of um, the order of the track listing, which I find weird that We Are Motorhead is last. It should be first. You're introducing the band. We are Motorhead. Why was that not first on the album? But anyway, cracking song. I love We Are Motorhead. It's excellent. It does start with the awesome Fast See Me Burning. Great track. I love Slow Dance. Nice sort of um, groovy kind of slow riff. Um, I quite like their um, cover of God Save the Queens. Not too bad. Um, Stage Fright, Crash and Burn. Re really good song. Um, so yeah, and the rest are okay. So yeah, yeah, pretty good album. Like a lot of the um, a lot of these albums are quite hard to order. They could be in any order in in a lot of ways. Um, sometimes I might like Motorizer more, but good album. 
So, uh, 14. And, uh, yeah, I, I like this album. Um, I, I think it's one of the worst album covers, um, but I think there were, um, I think behind it was they were kind of pushing the three piece thing because it's the first album um, as a three piece Lemmy, Phil Campbell, Mickey D. Um, after uh, uh, words were left, so in '96 you get Overnight Sensation. So uh, yeah, I'm never like uh, never a big fan of uh, band members on their covers that much, um, apart from one Motorhead album, of course. Uh, was there any cool stuff inside these albums? Snake might love having anything cool inside that. Just the band. Um, yeah, I like this album. I like this album quite a lot. Um, it starts with the brilliant Civil War. I uh, love that song. Um, don't believe the word. The kind of slightly ballady one. I really like that. Um, the title track's really good. Um, what else have we got? Broken. Um, really like that good chorus. Um, yeah, and then you got. Yeah, again, another sort of ballad you one, Listen to Your Heart. So again, like, um, some some uh, good songs. In general, it's an okay album. Um, but I, I remember, like, when this came out at the time, this was probably the time when I, I was sort of um, not moving away from Motorhead, but not overly excited about a new Motorhead release, maybe, like I, I was when I was a kid, you know. Um, but... I still like the album, it's still good. Uh, I, I remember not liking it that much when it came out, but uh, it, it grew on me over the years. Cool stuff. Um, now we're, we're into sort of albums, uh, I would say now, where I like, like at least half. And, um, oh man. It's a shame I've not got this album on vinyl, because it's one of my favourite album covers. Um, I've got it on CD. But it, 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 it's a really, it's a strange album actually in their category. Um, it, it's it's probably the sort of gnarliest, rawest, kind of uh, nastiest sounding albums really. It, 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 it was quite surprising when it came out. Um, and I love it because of that. It, uh, it's the album Sacrifice. I mean, the sound of this album is like unreal. Um, it's the last album with, uh, as a four-piece, last one with Wurzel. Um, he parted ways after this. He wasn't that much involved in the album, but the guitars, I don't know, because I'm not a musician, but the gu guitars sound down-tuned to me. Um, if they're not, I, I don't know what they've done, because it, it it's very bottom-end heavy. Like, the guitars, along with the bass, sound really bottom-end really brutal stuff but it's also very raw as well and it, I think it's still Howard Benson it is as well so it sounds completely different to <laughs> any of the other albums but um yeah this one's much very well liked on the internet I think uh, a lot a lot of the uh, younger fans the more metal fans I think like this album quite a lot and I'm, quite, I'm a metal fan so they, there you go but um Sacrifice the title track, awesome. Um, one thing that's noticeable on this album, I would say as well, is you really get to hear Mickey D's influence, I think, more with these kind of offbeat kind of drumming he does, like purposely missing the beat and things like that, which is quite weird. But and also, like, um, a song like Sacrifice, um, Phil. Uh, Phil Taylor would never have done a song like Sacrifice, the groove of it. It's very much a Mickey D type groove, I would say. Uh, pretty awesome stuff. Um, Sex and Death, short, fast and in your face. Over Your Shoulder is ridiculously heavy. <laughs> That's just like, ah, oh, I love that song. And uh, War for War as well is ridiculous. It's ridiculously heavy. Um... Uh, the the top the sort of first side uh, if you want of this album is is excellent. Um, All the fade to black, I love that. Really aggressive, fast and aggressive. Um, probably the rest of the album um, I, I I'm not as into, um, but don't waste your time's quite fun. Um, Dog face boy. So. 
but yeah, the, the first the first half or first side, if you will, of the album is re really good. So yeah, I kind of um, I've quite yeah, quite a sort of a strange uh, production. You could even say it's a bad production, maybe, but I, I like the sound of it. So uh, what do we have now? Yeah, now um. Like um, Jeff had uh, the world is yours as his favourite sort of modern album. I think I think we all have one album we really like from the sort of more modern post uh, two thousand, and this is definitely my favourite. And, and a lot of people's favourite sort of post two thousand album. It was the first album with Cameron Webb coming in, and you could really tell. Um, it just makes you smile when you hear how sort of uh, energised the album feels. Uh, come out in two thousand and four. Yeah. Uh, Awesome album cover as well. Shame I've not got it on vinyl, but Inferno. I think the idea is um, um, Snaggletooth is in the centre of the earth uh, being forged. But um, yeah, this is a very riffy, very heavy album. I really like this album. Killers is an awesome track. I love that. In the Name of Tragedy. Oh, one of my favourite modern Motorhead songs. Just fast and kind of but groovy as well but um i love that song um suicide's called life's a bitch a really good song um fight um uh, it's great uh beginning of that song you hear it, let me say uh put the bass up will you <laughs> bang um yeah the wolf pretty cool um and, and you get like a uh a straight up blues song at the end, which is something different from Motorhead as well, Whole House Blues, but it's really cool. But the whole album is uh, quite in your face and uh, quite heavy as well. And uh, they would keep that, that producer right until it, right up until the end, so really cool. Great stuff. Where are we now? Number 11. And I'm going to go, um, I've, I've talked a lot about um, production and uh, how some productions are good some are uh, not so good well this this is genuinely the only bad sound in Motorhead album I would say production is pretty poor but then again it's their first album and it it was during the punk era so it didn't really matter so the debut Motorhead from 77 and um, it's a cool album though. I, I, I still I really like I like all the songs on it. There's only eight songs. Uh, they they basically um, re-recorded the On Parole album. They they On Parole they recorded around seventy five, and that lineup sort of fell apart, and the album never got released. So they re-recorded it, and some made it on this album. Some made it onto the um, an EP called. Uh, beer drinkers and hell raisers which Lemmy wasn't happy with and he's never done that again as far as I know um, like have extra tracks la um, laid over so people can nick them and release an EP or whatever um, but yeah it's just really cool you got uh, Motorhead of course um, Vibrator um, which, I, which I actually prefer the on parole version actually um, with Larry Wallace singing, singing. Uh, Lost Johnny uh, is a um, a uh, Hawkwind song. Um, you got Iron Horse Born to Lose. Really cool song, as we all know. White Line Fever, I really like. Although there's a single version which I, I might prefer a little bit more actually, but great song. Keep Us on the Road, great song, really like it. It's quite long actually for Motorhead, that one. Uh, the Watcher is another Hawkwind song, uh, penned by Lemmy. And Train Keeper Rolling, which is an old blues song. Um, so yeah, really good. Sounds horrible, but it was at the uh, time when punk was around, so it, it, it kind of didn't really matter. And it's not like they had much money, you know. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's a pretty cool album. I like it. So, um, so we're in our top ten now, and and we'll talk about this album. Um, it, it's. Uh, it's probably the only Motorhead album that doesn't sound like a Motorhead album. And uh, if I was to not know about it and hear it nowadays, I probably wouldn't like it. But I grew up in this album. It's um, My parents got this. And I just really like the songs. Um, it, it's a shame it never got released. The, the, the production is actually better than Motorhead. Um, 
you could say it sounds kind of a bit weak, but you've got to remember this is pre-punk. It's actually recorded in 75, so actually it's quite a heavy sort of album for 75, really. Um, and it, and I've got the um, the re-released edition. Uh, it's Moat Red on Parole. This came out in 82 uh, on Fame. Uh, the original album was obviously shelved by United Artists and released to cash in basically um, at the tail end of 79 um, but I just really like the songs it's funny there's no Lemmy penned Motorhead songs in this album at all it actually feels almost more like a Larry Wallace project really so you've got Motorhead uh, um, it's, it's, it's the one that never gets played with the motorbikes at the beginning I think it's really cool um, I love the track on Parole I think it's an excellent song um, Vibrator again, I, I quite like that. I, I think I prefer that this version. Iron Horse Born to Lose is much more of a blues sounding number. I actually think I might even slightly prefer it. Actually, I, I, I like the kind of bluesy mellowness of that um, that track. It's quite it feels a bit more emotional maybe because of that. Uh, they do a really cool um, cover of City Kids, which is a Pink Fairy song. Uh, Falls is okay, The Watchers, Hawkwind's song, uh, Leaving Here is a, a cover, um, originally uh, like a Motown sort of cover, but I think the version they, they do is like The Birds, it's, 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 like, it's done like their version, and, uh, and you got Lost Johnny, uh, another Hawkwind song. But I like all, all, all the versions of, of the songs. It, yeah, it, you could argue it's not really a proper Motorhead album, but I really like it. Who produced it? Fritz Fryer. Okay. But yeah, um, Lemmy, Larry Wallace, Phil Taylor, and uh, Lucas Fox, Drums and Lost Johnny. And that's it. But I've always liked On Parole. Ah, we're into some uh, great albums now. So number nine. Yeah, um, yeah, it's an interesting album in their career as well. Um, everyone sort of disliked it at the time, saying it was uh, not, you know, the fast Eddie Clark had gone, and it was like supposedly not heavy enough and too different. But to me, it's it, it sounds like a heavy motorhead album. It's, it don't sound that radically different. It just has a different guitar player, you know, but which maybe makes it sound slightly different but it's more more musical maybe but i've always uh love love this album um it's kind of strange because there's some songs i absolutely love on the album and some i don't really care about at all it's one of them sort of strange albums but yeah of course i'm talking about another perfect day excellent album cover uh when joe uh, drew this he wanted to portray the band as being a little bit messed up at the time which they were and uh, so he did the old swirl and it even swells into the motorhead sign which I think is really cool uh, and the back cover is really excellent as well I, I think this is a heavy album I've never had a problem with it, it uh, inside as I've got to show you the inside it's quite funny as like a sort of funny cartoon um, it kind of taking the piss out of uh, Brian Robson being sort of drunk all the time that was a bit worrying because they did have a bit of a problem in that area but yeah it's a funny time in in in, the, in this period because i like, you know um he wasn't really he's a great guitarist and this album's great but um it wasn't really the, the correct fit for motorhead he refused to wear leathers he looked he had the hair band and the white tracky bottoms and you know just uh i'm probably doing that on purpose you know but didn't like to play the old songs and all that, but what a good album you got. Um, it opens up with a fucking awesome Back on the Funny Farm. I love that song. One of my favourite Motorhead songs, Shine, is excellent. Um, the first three songs are just fucking awesome. Dancing on Your Grave, one of my favourite songs as well. For, again, very melodic. Um, Lots of um, really great guitar soloing on all through this album. Well, obviously, you got uh, Brian, you know, uh, Dancing in Your Grave, brilliant. Um, Rocket, uh, One Trap Mine. You see, they're, they're sort of like kind of forgettable in a way. Another Perfect Day is not too bad. Uh, Marching Off to War, okay. I Got Mine, 
great song. I love I Got Mine. Um, Tales of Glory and then Die You Bastard. So yeah, there's uh, uh, five songs I really like and the rest um, not overly keen. But I certainly don't dislike it. Look, it's a good, really good album. Um, excuse my eyes a bit squinty. Uh, I've got a bit of an eye infection at the moment. Um, so if you see me blinking or doing weird things, don't worry about it. Yeah, so number eight. That came out in, uh, I keep forgetting to do the years, don't I? But that came out in 83. So yeah, this, this album, um, it's funny, I was always a bit disappointed with this album because it came out after Orgasmatron and I always found it slightly disappointing. But actually, it's a fucking great album. And uh, it's one of the albums, since I, I, I was listening through all my motorheads, it's one album that I, I think I enjoyed the most listening through again i was like damn it's it's actually a pretty pretty damn good album great album cover as well um it's rock and roll from 87 um on this album you um uh phil taylor comes back into the band on drums um but yeah i i, I think it's really good actually obviously you got um rock and roll uh, great, great opener. Eat the Rich, funny song, um, done for the film, really good. Black Art's pretty good. Stone Death in the USA, I really like that track. And of course, you, at the end of that, you get the hilarious Michael Palin uh, skit at the end of the side one, which is really good. I think it just happened to be in the studio around that time, and they just asked him to do it. The Wolf, really fast driving song, I really like that one. Um, probably... Probably my favourite song on the album, Traitor, or awesome track. Uh, Dogs I really like, great bass intro. Um, one, one track, arguably like um, the first time they really uh, did what you would describe as a commercial song or maybe a pop song. I was quite quite surprised it never got released as a single. And I actually really like it, it's um, All For You. Um, great chorus. And it's quite a sad kind of breakup song, really. Uh, um, I think the lyrics are really great. I'm feeling around here, sorry. I, uh, ah, the album's a bit broken. <laughs> but um, I really like All For You. I think that's a really good song. Great chorus, I love it. And then you finish off with The Burger Man. So, yeah, you're getting into albums I, I like most of it, most of the songs now, so great stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, this this next album, we're, we're at um, number seven now. Um, I was so pleased when they did this album. It, it felt like a, like a, a return to form. Um, I actually, it, I was a bit late on seeing Motorhead. Uh, the first time I seen Motorhead was on this tour. Um, and it, yeah, it just felt like a, a sort of return to sort of a heavy um, Motorhead. And it's, it's, it's awesome. It's from uh, 90, especially after March or Die, you know, from 93. It's uh, Bastards. I love this album. Um, what you got on here? Uh, on Your Feet or On Your Knees. Great start. And the straight away that riff and you're like, oh, yeah, good stuff. Who produces this? Oh, it's the Howard Benson. This, um, I think it's when he starts. Burner. Awesome. Uh, it was the first um, sort of fast thrashy number they'd done in quite a while um, that I can remember, probably since like like the Wolf from Rock and Roll maybe, uh, but it, it has a kind of almost thrash metal kind of vibe to it, so I, I really like that. Um, Death or Glory, fantastic chorus, I love, love that song. Iron the Soul is pretty cool. Born to Raise Hell, um, one of the... Uh, my favourite songs from the sort of 90s era, like very catchy, um, just super catchy chorus, I love it. Uh, and then you get, um, they started doing this a lot around this time, is like ballad, they started to get into the ballads, but they, they, this one's really good, uh, Don't Let Daddy Kiss Me, um, a subject matter certainly uh, never been touched upon by Motorhead before, uh, about child abuse. Uh, and I thought it's I think it's handled really well. It's um, not easy listening, really. I I, I think um, originally Lemmy wanted to uh, get a female to sing it, 
I think he put it to a few people, um, but he got turned down, you know, so he did it himself. Quite strong lyrically, but stuff like this needs to be talked about. So I think I think it's a really good song. Um, second side, Liar, really good song. Um, and we bring the shake, I like that. And I really like the last track, uh, Devils, actually. Um, re really good, really good kind of melodic chorus. Um, quite, again, quite a long song from overhead. Um, it, just a, a, a funny fact, actually. Uh, Bastards is the first album in, in Motorhead's category um, at that time not to have a title track. <laughs> Uh, every album before this had a title track, and and this would have because it was originally going to be called Devils, um, but uh, it got changed to Bastards in uh, in the end, which is cool. So yeah, I love Bastards. I play I play this a lot, growing up. Cool stuff. But my my favourite album. This is surprisingly not that like that much in the internet, but I, I fucking love this album, and it's my favourite album from outside of. Uh, the 80s and 70s anyway, um, favourite album of the 90s, definitely, I love this album, it's probably one of their most um, diverse albums as well, it's uh, 1916, shame I've not got uh, vinyl again, because it's a pretty cool cover, like a World War kind of cover, uh, it, it's a great album, I love this, um, it was the last one with... Um, Phil Taylor, um, yeah, Bastards was the first album with uh, Mickey D, um, uh, he did appear on a little bit on March or Die, but that's uh, Doug Aldridge, I think, uh, drums on March or Die, um, I love this album, I think it was on Epic as well, so it was like the uh, uh, first time I think they were on the major label, um, and it's just, it's just a really excellent sort of heavy in your face album, but also very diverse, there's lots going on on this album, which I, I love. So pretty much all the songs I like, the one that sings the blues, love that song, excellent start. I'm so bad, baby, I don't, I don't care, awesome, <laughs> awesome track. No Voices in the Sky, I really like that, melodic. Um, the only, okay, let's talk about this song. Uh, I don't get this song because um, for some reason they always play this song live and I don't really like it that much uh, it, it, it's like a rock and roll this song it's okay I don't hate it but going to Brazil um I don't understand why they keep playing it live uh, tell me in the comments I mean is it a fan's favorite um do the band just like playing it all the time because I don't really like it that much you know I'm, every time I see Motor quite a lot of times and every time they would play that I'd be like oh here it comes going to Brazil, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't like it that much, um, but you got uh, other great songs though, Night Nightmare in the Dreamtime, reminds me of, uh, it's, it's almost like them going back to a, a strange guy, like a psychedelic sort of song, uh, the bass intro is like The Watcher, um, I love that song, it's great, uh, Love Me Forever, like the power ballad, I love, I love, I love Love Me Forever, I lo a really great song, really yeah, I'm quite emotional lyrically, um, quite powerful, I like that track. Angel City is alright, uh, Make My Day, uh, I love uh, Ramones, uh, their tribute to uh, Ramones is great, uh, fantastic. Um, Shut You Down is pretty good. But then you end with probably one of my favourite Motorhead uh, songs ever, actually. Uh, it was a total and utter departure for Motorhead. Uh, it absolutely stunned me when I first heard it. I couldn't believe what I was listening. Um, obviously, it's the title track, 1916. Um, I pretty much cry every time I hear that song. It's, it's unreal. I mean, it's pretty much just um, him singing with um, synthesizers and orchestra, mainly a cello with a sort of a wartime drum beat going in the background and it's so heartbreaking the song it's so heartbreaking and um so brutal lyrically it doesn't hold back on the lyrics of um what war is really really about you know um 
It's horrendous. I mean, I, I, I very rarely listen to it because I find it hard to listen to. But for me, it's probably... Um, it's got to be one of my favourite Motorhead songs. I mean, like, when I hear it, I, I, I can't hear any, anything else after. Like, how do you listen to 1916 and then, you know, listen to like, a, a heavy sort of Motorhead song and it sort of doesn't really work, so... I love, I love that. So, yeah, great album, 1916. Superb stuff. Ah, uh, we're getting into some good stuff now. This is the top five. And, uh... We're getting into some classic motorhead now, of course, and uh, yeah, from 1979, uh, this is the awesome Bomber. <laughs> Very cool cover. Uh, there's the back. Hope you can see the covers, I hope it's not too bright or dark or whatever. Um, I love Bomber. Um, took me a while to get into this because like, I was so into the albums around it, but and so it gets lost a little bit, uh, but actually, you know, from from track one to track ten, it's really really good album. It's very um, it's a very dirty sounding album. Um, you know, it's not overly produced, but it's produced well enough to sound great. You know, um, and um, I think lyrically as well, um, Lemmy was getting into more sort of serious subjects. Um, but they, yeah, fucking the songs. De Dead Ben Tell No Tales was um, really a dig in, in a lot of ways to the producer, Jimmy Miller, who was um, at the time um, suffering from her heroin addiction. Uh, he was obviously the uh, more famous for being the producer of Rolling Stones, so he, he got into the heroin thing. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely Lemmy. Uh, Having a bit of a dig there, I would say, but also just his hatred for heroin in general. Yeah, Lawman, love that. Um, having a go at the police and the way they uh, treat people. Uh, Sweet Revenge, really cool. Um, the way it, with that backward sound uh, sliding, and I thought it was really cool. Sharpshooter, really good song. I love Poison. Fucking love Poison. Great song. Um... And again, it's um, part of the song is about his, you know, his upbringing with a uh, religious upbringing with his dad. Um, great song. Then the side two, you got Stone Dead Forever, brilliant. Um, the bass solo on it is excellent. All the aces I love. Step Down is a, a song of um, Fast Eddie Clark wanted to uh, sing a song. He was always going on about wanting to sing a song, so he does Step Down. It's a pretty good song. I don't mind it actually. I think I mean, it's the only one he's sung, uh, apart from, I think, um, Emergency, uh, some B-side, I think he sung as well, but, uh, Talking Ed, yeah, about people just spouting bullshit, really, you know, and then, uh, then you got the, um, the the Almighty Bomber, of course, at the end, which is one of the all-time Motorhead classics. So, yeah, from top to bottom, uh, these top five albums I just love um, pretty much all the way through. Um, yeah, great album. Love Bomber. So, number four. Now, um, this is probably an album on my list is quite controversial this high up because it's not really that well loved. It's not loved by the band that much. I think it gets a bad rap. I think it gets a bad rap for a main, mainly because it comes after Ace of Spades. I think any album coming after that is going to be in a bit of trouble. Uh, uh, the production was rushed a bit. Um, so it probably doesn't sound as slick as Ace of Spades, but I really like the production on it. Um, uh, Eddie, Eddie Clark actually did the production. Uh, I, I fucking love this album. I love all the songs. A lot of people think the song has been a bit filler, but... I just, I just fucking love this um, album all the way through. Iron Fist from uh, 83. I always think, like, would, if you swapped Bomber with Iron Fist, would Bomber still get that same reputation, maybe? I don't know. I've always thought that. Um, but... Yeah, I love it. I love this album. Iron Fist, obviously Heart of Stone is awesome. This album's really fast and like, it's just really catchy. Heart of Stone, fucking love that song. Uh, I'm the Doctor, good fun. Uh, Go to Hell, I like. Loser, melodic. 
I really like the guitar on that. Sex and Outrage is just fast and awesome. Uh, kind of like uh, a follow-on from Jailbreak in a way, lyrically. America, Catchy Number, uh, Shut You Down, I really like. Speed Freak, another fast one. Really in your face. I love the drumming on that. Um, Don't Let Them Grind You Down, again, drum intro, awesome. Um, Don't Need Religion, one of my favourite Motorhead riffs. The bass, like, intro and... The, uh, that, that riff is awesome and obviously lyrically tells you what Lemmy thinks of religion and you, then you finish off, finishes off with Bang to Rights. I like this album a lot, a lot more than most people. I think, the, And certainly more than the band. The band never really liked it but I think that's a really cool inside cover. I love that. Iron Fist. It's a good album. I don't care what anyone says. So, so now we're into the top three, and uh, for me, these have always been set in stone, these top three. They're three very special albums uh, uh, for me. Um, so we'll start with uh, number three, and I'll, I'll just let you know, this, this album was the first album that came out when I got into Motorhead. So this was the new album for me, and uh, I was obviously blown away. How I started... Um, with Mo Edward, I think you would have called that um, three albums, uh, um, no six albums with What's Wordsworth on Parole. And then I, I remember um, No Remorse come out and uh, the, the double album. Uh, I'll show you it actually because I've got the cool uh, leather bound version. I'm a vegan, so it's the only, the only leather thing I won't throw away. Um, and uh, what, I, what I loved about this that, that album is there was four new songs on it and they and they sounded completely different to anything that Motorhead had done they were very heavy they were very fast um, they sounded modern at the time and that was uh, Snaggled Tooth Steal Your Face Killed by Death and Locomotive and I was like quite blown away by them um, Killed by Death obviously has become a, quite a uh, a big song, huge song from Motorhead, but Locomotive blew me away, that's like, that was just straight up fresh metal, and I think um, Motorhead were probably looking at what, what was going on at the time with um, the fresh metal scene, you know, the likes of Metallica and all these, Slayer and Megadeth and all these sort of um, guys, um, and you could tell, and um, and it was a brand new lineup as well, uh, so we got that, and then we got the um, the nineteen eighty five birthday party um, VHS live concert. I think it was at Hammersmith, and that blew me away as well. I absolutely love that live concert. Uh, and again, you got some um, new songs and that. I think Mean Machine is on it. Um, um, Built for Speed, although on that it's called On the Road. And I was like, ah, oh, these new songs sound great. And then it got released finally in uh, eighty. Five or eighty six. Um, I should know the year. It's silly of me. It's eighty six, and a brand new lineup of uh, Phil Campbell, um, Wurzel. Um, I can never remember the bloody guy's name. The drummer. They only had him for the uh, the one album in the end. Uh, X Saxon. Ah, uh, Pete Gill. Yeah, X Saxon drummer. And I love, I love, I love his drumming on this album as well. Uh, of course, it's Orgasmatron. Um, the production is interesting. Like, not everyone likes it. Uh, I, I love it. It's, it's. Um, I don't think it's a bad production. I think it's a different sound in Motorhead. Um, uh, the drums are very loud, very echoey. Uh, actually, um, I know the band weren't happy with the mix. They, they reckon there was a better mix. I mean, I'd like to hear the better mix because I think it sounds awesome. Um, very aggressive. And it starts with the... Uh, I love every song. <laughs> it starts with Death Forever. One of my all-time favourite Motorhead songs. So heavy and dirty. They released that as a single as well. Cool cover as well. I quite like, like that cover. It was originally going to be called uh, Riding With The Driver. But they changed the name, thankfully, to Orgasmatron. Um... Nothing up the sleeve. Uh, they still play that a lot live uh, up, up until they finished. 
um, really cool. Lyrically, um, uh, comparing uh, love life with uh, magic, I thought that was a quite quite of a, a good way of doing it. R really cool song. Ain't my crime. Really good chorus. Lo love that song. The claw. Um, <laughs> quite a funny song lyrically, but fast in your face. Love that song. Mean Machine. Ah, oh, I love Mean Machine. That's just straight up thrash metal, really. Um, the way it starts, you know. Very aggressive. Um, side two, Built for Speed. And I, um, I love the drum intro and and uh, a great kind of classic mid pace motorhead. Very, very catchy. Um, I love it. Uh, Riding with the driver, another crazy fast one. Uh, Doctor Rock. A really funny song. That's on Eat the Rich, the film as well. Um, but I love it. It's a great song. And then you get the legendary Orgasmatron. Um, one of my favourite songs by Motorhead. And what I love about this is... Um, I think it's arguably the best lyrics by Lemmy. Um, if you look, each verse takes on a subject that he hates. So... Um, yeah, the outstretched grass my hand. Yeah, the, my name is called Religion. So this is Sacred Hall. So the first verse is what he, what he thinks of uh, religion. But it's also done in the first person. So it's almost like uh, he's, tell, he's telling the story as a first person, how, how sadistic he is. Um, yeah, I am the politician and I decide your fate. It's the second verse. So he talks about um, politicians. And then... For I am master god of war and I will cut you down. So the last verse is about war. And and each one is uh, absolute perfection. I love uh, uh, what he does with his focal style. Really, like more growly and menacing. Um, it's just one of the best uh, motorhead songs. I love it. So yeah, Orgasmatron. But... No surprise, and it had to be these last two. Um, uh, I, I think for a lot of people, it's their favourite two albums. And it was all, it's always been... I've always had my favourite, really, but um, there isn't really anything between these two. They're both really great albums. Um, but for, for number two, I'm going to go... Um, for 1980s, Ace of Spades. Now, that's a really cool cover. Um, we, I think we all know the story now. It's not um, them dressed as uh, uh, sort of cowboys uh, out in the middle of uh, the Midwest or anything like that. It's uh, it's them in a uh, stone quarry in Barnet, North London, <laughs> with pretend sky. Um, yeah, but a uh, really cool cover. And what a legendary album, and, and this album uh, has a really good production as well. Uh, they, uh, Vic Mal, um, who is actually involved with Hawkwind a bit as well, uh, he, he sort of produced Space Rituals, involved with that, uh, so they knew him. Um, he has all these sort of weird sound effects all the way through it, like spoons and uh, rattlesnake noises and all that. It has all that going on, but everything sounds spaced really well. And it's just a really sort of well produced album and it's actually absolutely legendary of course um every song's great really pretty much uh, every song's great um obviously in a legendary ace of spades don't really need to hear that song again really but still a great song uh, love love me like a reptile great great riff i love that song shooting the back Fantastic song again, just the, just the riff. Just the riffs on this album are great. Lift to Wind's pretty really good. Um, Fast and Loose, pretty good song. We are the Road Crew, uh, legendary song. Um, obviously about about Motorhead's Road Crew. It's a really really nice thing for Lemmy to do when you think about it. It's write a song uh, for for his Road Crew, you know. But that's a fantastic song. Um, Fire Fire. Starts the second side, and then uh, one of my favourite Motorhead songs, Jail Jail Bait. Um, I love that song. Just groovy, uh, great riff. I love the way it ends. Um, I love uh, the guitar playing on that. Um, lyrically, 
not very politically correct nowadays, is it? Um, <laughs> but it's of its time. Uh, Dance is probably the only song I'm not that keen on Merchant Ace of Spades. But, uh, and then you got uh, Bite the Bullet. Um, great song which leads straight into The Chase is Better Than a Catch, which is a, like, a, a, a great slow number by, by Motorhead. But, um, a superb number. Um, and has... Um, which, you know, it's become part of the solo, but there's a bit in the song where um, Eddie Clark drops his guitar and then picks up and carries on playing the solo, but it's become part of the song, like, you know, whenever they played it live, they they they, uh, they kept that in. But um, it's, a, it, it's a good sing-along, that one, as well. And it ends with one of my favourite Motorhead songs of all time as well, The Hammer. Oh, The Hammer's just ferocious. The drumming on that is unreal. It's funny because it's, um, if you listen to it, um, Phil Taylor's, it's almost like a swing time type drumming. Da -da 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 like that. It's not just straight kind of, da -da -da -da, you know, rock or thrash beat. It's like really, really clever. It's really clever. And it's just a ferocious, nasty song. And, and a, a great ending to the album as well. I just love it. So Ace of Spades, an all-time classic. What an album. It's not my number one, because my number one is uh, just... Oh, I don't know what to say about this album. Um, you know what it is already. It came out in uh, 79, produced by Jimmy Miller. Um, I, it's funny because it... It's funny that it come like straight after the debut, which sounds kind of shitty. Um, but this this sounds really good. Although I actually think this al album, even though it comes out before Bomber, I think it sounds a bit better than Bomber. I don't know why, but it has a very similar production because Jimmy. Um, I just love I just love this album. Of course, it's Overkill and one of the greatest album covers of all time. Joe Patagno actually says he doesn't really like it. Was a bit weird. He wanted to do more with it, but I'm like, no, no this is a fantastic album cover, one, one of the greatest of all time. Don't you worry about that. And it's just, it's just brilliant. I mean, obviously, um, hearing No Slips Hammersmith um, first, uh, there's a lot of songs uh, um, on No Sleep from this album, which obviously I, you hear that and you, you go back to that album. Uh, I mean, no sleep time is if the songs are more ferocious, but they, they still sound excellent on here. Um, Overkill, probably one of my favourite Motorhead songs. Um, the false endings, the uh, the sheer kind of uh, f uh, the sheer kind of uh, um, lyrically, uh, it's just like rock, you know. Like, it's rock, you know, it kind of has that kind of vibe to it. If you're not rocking, you're dead, you know. I uh, just love the lyrics. And um, that the final guitar solo in the false endings is just so simple, but I just love, I love the way um, Eddie Clark plays that. Um, then you get uh, Stay Clean. Uh, I love Stay Clean, one of my favourite songs. I'm going to say this a lot about this album, one of my favourite songs. Um... Yeah, again, you know, um, just trying to live your life the best way you can, you know, but basically saying, you know, but has one of my all-time favourite bass solos on any song, uh, brilliant. I Won't Pay Your Price, awesome groovy number, I'll Be Your Sister, weird weird song. Um, what are you talking about, Lemmy, I'll Be Your Sister, <laughs> but, but I, I do like it. Capricorn. Like an atmospheric kind of song, a bit different for um, uh, Motorhead even at that time, but um, really great song. Um, and then you get a side two, it starts with No Class. Um, fantastic riff, obviously nicked from Tush, uh, Susie Top, it doesn't matter. I, I, I heard this before I heard Tush, so, but you know, fantastic riff, great, great lyrics. Um, just a fantastic rock song. Uh, and then it goes into Damage Case, another fantastic song. Um, <laughs> they're all fantastic. Uh, Tear You Down, love that. Um, Metropolis, I love Metropolis. Um, 
The lyrics are a bit weird. There ain't many lyrics on it, but I, I love the... Uh, it, it's a slow one. But I just lo love the weirdness of that song, actually. Um, and and after, after the sort of first initial first, I, I, love, I love the way Fast Eddie Clark plays it on that number. So it's just really good. Um, I love the No Sleep version of it. Uh, yeah, Metropolis, really excellent song. And it finishes off with uh, Limb for Limb, which is great. It's one of my favourite sort of uh, lesser known songs. Uh, blue, starts with blues and then speeds up at, at the end, which I think is just fantastic. Um, yeah, it's like every, every, every song on here is just great. <laughs> um, and I'm like, at the, the, my, so my top three are like pretty much, I like everything off the album, but like, yeah, this one's ridiculous really. Um, so there you go. My favourite Motorhead album, Overkill. So, I hope you enjoyed my ranking. I hope it didn't go on for too long. Um, yeah, um, make some comments uh, down below. Uh, what, what's your favourite? Um, what, what did I get wrong? Um, uh, and uh, yeah, let us know what your favourites are and what you don't like uh, um, or whatever. Um, check out all the other content on the Grey Man channel. Um, what, what we're going to actually uh, do... Uh, I hopefully is put all these album rankings in the playlist now because uh, uh, we've done five now so and I have been asked um, about other ones so um, we'll try and get that into a playlist for you um, the next um, album ranking I'll try not to wait too long this time um, uh, it will be with Graham I, I originally I wanted to do Cathedral um, because my sister's got all the albums but because of the lockdown thing you know, I can't really go over to my sisters and get all the albums, so we might put that one off. Not sure what we're gonna do, um, um, because it it has to be something me and Graham both like. You know, uh, he likes Motorhead, but um, I'm a huge fan. So, um, I know what I'm gonna do next day for myself. Uh, I'm gonna do the album ranking of Pink Floyd. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, massive fan of Pink Floyd. So I uh, hope you can join me for that one. So yeah, thanks ever so much. Motorhead Overkill, number one album. I'll see you all on the next one.